So Melinda is getting some lemongrass here. She's gonna make us a uh, fish soup. Yes. And we also got. Malungay, yeah, we didn't buy this. She just stuck it in a bag to carry it. Uh, this is off of a tree right here in Las Conchas. There's yeah. these trees scattered all on the property in here. So Malunga, Moringa, whatever name you want to call it, call it delicious. Moringa, fresh uh, lemongrass from from our land here. Yeah, her brother planted all this over here for us, and which he benefits from it too. The whole family does. We've got it scattered all around as well. I asked him to plant it all the way across the front of my property over there. It's slowly spreading. There are a bunch there, but the, when last month, you know, there's that strong wind and they're not surviving. Yeah, that strong wind and salt water from that storm that came through. Yeah, I roll this one and uh, later on I'm going to put in my piece. So Miss Melinda is preparing us some sweet and sour shrimp. And what well, you got? Tuna going over here? Yes. Yeah. Tuna. So she's got some tuna that she's thawing out we had in the freezer. We picked up fresh at the market the other day. And she's here chopping up her onions and garlic. Yeah, I need some meat. And what'd you say? Almiris. We call that one Almiris. Almiris. Mm -hmm. And right now she's gonna do a little smashing up on the rest of our seasonings here. Yeah, tastes more taste good if you really need to smash it. All the season, I mean the spice. So it is a coriander and black pepper. Coriander and black pepper there. Eating out, it can be okay here, but I really enjoy mostly what Melinda cooks at home, both in the U.S. and when we're here. I tell you, the freshness and in her little ninja cooking skills. Yes, the little ninja cooking skills. So what would you be, like a kitchen ninja? Yeah. Is that what you are? Yeah. <laughs> there you are, right there. That's the kitchen ninja, right there. Plus, if you cook in home, at least you know what you put it there, right? That's right. So it's nice, you know. She picked these up out of the local market there. They were expensive. Let me tell you. Let me give you a deal. You know, when she picked these two up out of the market today, and she come back and got in the truck, she goes, "Oh my God, babe, you would not believe how much these cost." Well, what did you say? There were 40 something pesos? 40 pesos. Huh? Yes, 40 pesos. 40 pesos for just these two pieces, right? Yeah, for just two pieces of uh, that, that equals to, I mean, something like 85 cents, maybe 90 cents, you know? Right here, just for these two pieces. That is crazy. That's the way it is here. So. Once again, if, if we ever get to the point that we're here more long term, we plan to be growing stuff ourselves. We are actually making planters over there now that, that even in our lot there, that we can grow things there. I, but I, here's what I'm thinking we'll have to do. Seeing what happened with the salt water over there with the plants of that bad storm and it brought that spray way in, I think I'll probably invest and build her a greenhouse. I say her because she really enjoys this stuff. So when I say her, of course, it will be for us. But Melinda really enjoys the hobby of growing these things. And uh, so we'll probably build a greenhouse. I know it's kind of crazy. You're in a tropical country and you got almost a year-round growing season and all. But it's sometimes too much sun here and you can control it with some shading and then you can also block off the um, the sea spray 
by having that covered as well. It doesn't take much to stop it. It's not like the air is just so full of it. It's when it's really blowing in that heavy mist. And if you got something there, a cover, that'll catch that, well, um, your plants will thrive pretty good. I'll tell you what else is outrageous here. In this country, lettuce. Lettuce has become outrageous. Yes, you can grow lettuce here, and it is grown in a lot of places. But let me tell you, it is expensive. I guarantee it's three to four times the price than what it is in the U.S. And it's hard to source. So if you want to just whip up a salad here, you better choose something else besides lettuce to make your salad out of, or you're going to have one high dollar salad. That is the truth, right, Mel? Yeah, exactly. So. That is something else I look forward to that if we have our own um, greenhouse here eventually is that we can grow our own lettuce in there as well. Now, as I'm talking about making a greenhouse, I don't know if you subscribers know it or not. Some of you do that's been with me for a minute. But our house that we're planning on building over there in Los Conscious, we're just trying to get, get it underway at the moment. Um, the roof of that is going to be a flat roof up there, all cement, and we're going to put a membrane down and then put another layer of cement to protect that membrane, and we're going to grow on top of our roof. It'll provide shading, it'll provide an insulation from the sun, and it'll provide us more of a grow space. So we're wanting to keep it green that way right there. We're already going to have a water tank on top of the roof. We can actually make other ways to catch water as well. And uh, what I'm thinking to do is, is put a in-ground cistern, and which that's not really a think I'm going to do. I know I'm going to do that. I'm going to put an in-ground cistern. Then what I thought I would do is I would put a secondary water tank on the roof that's for the rainwater and use the 12-volt solar pump like I have on our well over there right now that I can transfer that water from the cistern up to the tank and then gravity feed it out. Now I'm not going to be trying to put sprinkler heads and things that require a certain PSI. I'm not going to go that method. I want to keep our life a little less complicated than that. I'm not downing anybody that's done it including James at my PI Dream. I'm not downing him from that. But I just don't want so many gadgets that it's a constant work and something's always going out. Because let's face it, electronics, something's always going out. So that's what I was thinking is that we would do a, a drip type system for watering the plants, transfer the water, solar to the roof, gravity feed it back down to the ground. So um, meanwhile, we'd have water already on the roof for our plants there too without extracting water from our well to do that. So that's what we got going there and I look forward to getting on those projects later down the road. I finally got a hold of Elvin, our draftsman that's also helped uh, work with the city and local engineers and um, to get all of our stuff certified and approved and you know he just kind of was my go-to man while we would have to leave and go abroad and all, and I really thank him for everything he's done. But he was far back in a province area where he's building his home, and he was kind of out of touch, and I figured that might be what it was. So I went and found his niece today, and his niece, lo and behold, said his wife is working right upstairs on the third or fourth floor. I went up there and found Elwin's wife, thanks to Bean, and... Uh, she was able to uh, get contact through to him and he has already made contact with me that he will be here in the morning with our papers and he said everything is complete. So I am uh, pretty excited for that. Now, I don't know if he means complete with him or complete to turn into the city. I know we've already done a lot of stuff with the city so I don't know exactly what that complete means but I'll know it tomorrow. But I'm ready to get our permit numbers on our lot and um, have things ready to work. If I do want to do some work for this trip, 
and have some things in place that we could go ahead. Maybe I want to go ahead and start getting the, the septic put in. That would be uh, a big bonus and, and would help us out over there. So, meanwhile, I'm going to get off here and enjoy Mel cooking here. Look here. She's got her. She's always so organized. Look at this. She got everything in order just the way she wants it as she cooks. She is like a little mini professional kitchen. Or as I said, the kitchen ninja. The, <laughs> the kitchen ninja right there. I love this girl. Ah, uh, so I just got back here to the house. Melinda's been cooking. I've been over in the shop putting my toolbox together. Man, look at that sweet and sour shrimp i'm ready to get on that and look right here this fish soup with moringa or malunga as you call here in the philippines ah i'm ready to eat that as well i've already got me a plate started here get me a bowl for that soup melinda's already jumped ahead of me eating because she don't want to wait on me because sometimes i said i'm gone 20 minutes i might be gone two hours so I know why she didn't wait. Ah, look at that. Fresh mango also. You see these? Look at that. Nice. Well, I wish I could share this with you. I really do. Maybe if you were here having a meal with us. We could really enjoy this little feast. But you're not. I'm here. You're there. So I'm eating. So we're going to get off here. And as always, we thank you for continuing to support us and our homesteaders. I know some of this stuff, this content we've had lately don't really maybe appeal to you. But we'll get out there. We're just kind of getting our feet on the ground here. Getting some basic stuff that we need it done you know life you got business to take care of and then we're going to get out and we're going to show you some of the local farmers here we're going to show you about um, an echo farm that's right here by us that we're very familiar with the owner maybe we can visit with him we can show you how they recycle these rice hulls and carbonize them and i'm going to ask mr uh, psycho that owns that farm if he will um, let me know when they're going to be making those carbonized rice hulls and I can share that with you guys as well. So stick in there for that. And again, we both thank you. Yeah, very thank you much. so much, everyone.